Okay, how's it going everybody? Um, I got a lot of emails asking me about my dealership, what it looks like, stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you what I have. If yours is bigger, smaller, whatever, that sounded bad. Um, but don't be ashamed of your dealership. It's your money, it's your dream, build it up the way you want. Um, I always tell people start off small, there's nothing wrong with that. If you got a bunch of buckets, thousand dollar cars, that's actually the way to go, so this way you don't have massive overhead. But once you get to like this size, you're gonna need either a big chunk of money or you're gonna need flooring lines. It actually gets scary because your curtailments will eat up all your money. So I'm gonna kinda give you a like walkthrough and kinda show you what I got. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you. My dealership is on a, well it looks <laughs> dead now. <laughs> There's a car. But it's a uh, pretty busy intersection. Good traffic. I got a U.S. bank across the street. If you look down this way, we got all of our cars focused along the side of the street. Um, I always try to put, you know, something, what we call bait cars up front. We put one of these up to bring the people in. This is a high mileage Chrysler 300. I put these things up because um, this one, it's got like 110,000 miles, but it's only $79.95. So when people look up on our website and they see a 2013, uh, sorry, big truck. A 2013 Chrysler 300 for $79.95, they lose their minds. They want to come down here and take a look at it. But I'll walk you down this way just to kind of show you what we have. You got your flags, your banners out. Make sure that people recognize you. You kind of look in the back there. We got a second row, which we're going to follow through. Once again, the corner. You kind of walk this way. I try to have a little bit of everything for everybody. So like right here is kind of our truck row. We have a bunch of trucks that uh, I get on consignment from construction companies. So a lot of times, here let me switch out the camera. So a lot of times if you can't afford um, to get inventory, a lot of times you can get this stuff consigned by other people. So all these trucks here are consignments from construction companies. So this way we can help them sell their cars, we can get people financed, and we hopefully should make about $1,000 to $1,500 on every single truck. And it helps my customer out because now he doesn't have to worry about tire kickers and people bothering him, and we could set up the financing. And once we get these ones done, he's gonna buy all of his new vehicles from us. And we also do the service, which I'll show you in the background, there's a big building right there. That is our shop, which I'm gonna go through here in a minute, but we're still gonna walk through the lot. We'll go ahead and flip the camera around. We'll go back out there. So you can kind of see the lineup. Like I said, we want to have some new stuff, some cheap stuff, stuff that's not very expensive, just to kind of show people the inventory you have. Always walk through your lot, clean. I don't know if you can see the bushes here. We try to clean up all the garbage. So what we'll do is we'll kind of walk back this way. I'll show you the inside of the uh, the lot, you know, the perfect example, this car right here, 2004 uh, GMC uh, Yukon XL. I bought this one for probably, probably 1800 bucks. It's got about 160 on it, but it runs great. Inside's immaculate. We're selling this one for 59.95 with regular financing. Or if they do buy here, pay here, this car will be uh, like 69.95. Everything kind of goes up a thousand for buy here, pay here. Same thing with the van. This is kind of the buy here, pay here bucket row on the SUVs. Walk over this way. Um, that's one of my personal cars. It's one of my favorite. It's an 09 SL 550 uh, uh, Silver Arrow Edition. It's only got 30,000 miles. This one's going to be up for sale. Either check my page or check out eBay. That's what will be up there. Um, we always put one midsize SUV, this car right here. $2,500 cash out the door. Um, we actually just parked this one up. The other one's sold, but we put really big stickers all across the side and the windshield. So as people are driving by that intersection, we have the first line of cars, which you can kind of see right here. People look at those and then right when they pop by, this one is lit up. And if you look right up here, you can see our lights. This is right underneath the spotlight. So at nighttime, these get the lights shining off them from the lights above. But this one really, really highlights it. So this one right here, I always tell people, set up a few spots for your bait cars. Cars that you're gonna post with uh, either really cheap cash prices or like guaranteed financing. So we're gonna scroll through here. Um, a lot of our stuff, we kind of switched our inventory, is like newer with lower miles. 
There's a bucket. That's the buy here, pay here bucket. Don't know why this one's up front here. And we got some 15 Camry, some accents. Now, one of my best things, which I'll tell you guys when we flip the camera around. Okay. A lot of people sleep on Hyundai's. Hyundai's, I think, are probably one of the best cars that are being made right now. They're very inexpensive, they're very dependable, and you could steal them at the auction. So, perfect example, this 15 Corolla, I think I paid $11,000 for that, and I got a retailer for 10. Where this exact same 15 Corolla, I think we paid six grand, and I'm gonna retail it for 10. So, this one's gonna be almost $4,000 profit. This one, maybe after financing fees, we maybe make maybe 1,500, two grand. So, sometimes with the uh, Hyundai's, you can get a much better deal on buying them compared to the Toyotas. So go down here, G8. Those are pretty rare. We like to have those in. That brings a lot of people in. This is a bait car. It's only got 60,000 miles, but most people can't uh, afford it. Got a Kia. Same thing, here's some more of the work trucks on this side. We try to capture both angles. So this way we got people coming from, you know, the left side all the way to the right side. Can look at our lineup there same thing just regular cars a lot of hyundai's a lot of toyota's a lot of ford focuses we'll kind of continue on through we got some nissan maximas civics got a few bmws i call them bucket bmws these ones right here you could buy at the auction between two and three grand they look good 69.95 these are for all your ballers on a budget so if they want to drive a bmw but they can't afford it buy one of these for about 2500 bucks 69.95 you make quite a bit of money. Um, if you can do buy here, pay here on it, do $79.95. These people keep coming back. Uh, Ford Focus, another Focus, another Hyundai. We got a little Kia Soul toaster box. This one is so... We got it up for sale for fourteen grand. we are the cheapest ones in town. But these things cost so much money and it's crazy. I thought the, the value would drop, but they keep rising. Um, and then we also got something weird. We take on, like I said, some other consignments. This is an RV. If we sell this one for the customer's asking price, we're gonna make 5,000 bucks on this one. Normally I wouldn't do that, but it's taking up this whole lot here. Um, then if we kind of walk this way, this is just the same thing. A lot of incremental cars. If you kind of notice the trend, from the very front is the most expensive cars. As we walk back this way, you're gonna start seeing cheaper and cheaper cars. So if we walk this way, the cars are not 2015s, they're 2011s, 2012s, well, here's a 15, but this one's only like 8,000 bucks. Same thing with these ones. So as we start walking away down this way, everything starts to go cheaper. So right here is kind of our bucket lane is what I call it. Um, we actually sold a few cars out of it, but you know, we got cars that are buy here, pay here. So if we can't get customers financed on the cars that are over there, we take them over here and we run them through uh, these particular vehicles. These are, you know, older, higher mileage stuff that we can get done through the bank that we could finance. Oh, these ones are actually a little bit newer. Um, this one here is a buy here, pay here car. So when we can't get customers to get approved through a bank, we bring them back here. So one of the jobs that you want to do as a salesman, let me flip this around so I can talk to you guys. Okay, one of the things I teach my salesmen and what you need to learn if you're gonna open up your dealership is you always want to try to pre-qualify your customers while you're here on the lot. So when you walk up to them, you're like, how you doing folks? How long have you been on your job? What do you do for a living? Have you had any repos in the last year? Oh, I saw you drove up in a nice truck. Are you guys trading that in? The whole time you're talking to these people, you wanna be basically pre-qualifying them for a vehicle. So this way, now that you know kind of where they stand, you know which part of the lot to put them in because there's nothing worse than setting people free and they're like, oh, I want this Mercedes right here. Can you give me this Mercedes? And you're like, oh no, sorry, buddy. The only thing you can afford is that Hyundai up there. You know, and then what happens? People get disappointed, they get upset, they talk shit and they leave. So one of the things you wanna do is, as you're talking to these customers, you're pre-qualifying them, you're looking around the lot, like behind me right now, and you're assessing, okay, he's got no repos, he makes two grand a month, um, but his credit's not the best. So I'm not gonna stick him up here where everything is like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 and up. Um, these ones basically start from like, uh, I'd say about maybe eight to about 15,000. Then we go to the next row down. These cars are the cars that are 10 grand and below. So now I know if the customer told me that, this is where we're gonna stick them at. So as we're walking out of the office, we can say, okay, um, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I heard about your credit. You told me what you had. 
you know, we're going to get you a, a good affordable car to rebuild your credit. We're going to get you this car. It's only $79.95. It's 2012, 60,000 miles. Or if they say that's too old, you know, 2015 Kia, it's only got 30,000 miles for the Dodge Dart. You know, something over here that's under 10 grand. And then worst case scenario, you go back to Bucket Row. So the way my dealership set up is, like I said, it's, it's cheaper. And as we walk to this way, it gets a little bit more affordable. So we have one indoor office, which is in the back. We have the office trailer, which is right there. It's hot as hell, but it sucks. But that's what we need right now. Because from the back, we can't see anybody. Um, this is our truck, our tow truck. These are critically important. If you open up a dealership, buy one. You will save so much money because every time I go to the auction, you buy cars, you get cars, you tow cars, whatever. This thing just makes you money. Um, we have two of these. The other one's actually getting painted right now, but we just finished this one. Um, we just put the stinger on it. So you can go budget. You could buy a used one. They're usually about 15 to 25 grand, but they're worth every dollar. A lot of times, like on Sundays, you take a pocket full of money and you drive around in this thing. Any car that runs and drives for $1,000, you buy it, you bring it back to the dealership, you put it up for sale for your buy here, pay here, $1,000 down, 250 a month, and you do it with the tow truck, you're just saving money and you're making money hand over fist. Um, these are all the trade-ins we get. So we pick them up like this one. It was torn apart by a shop. You can see all the car bits right there. There's probably nothing underneath the hood there. A few buckets, stuff like this. We just pretty much, I either have wholesalers I sell it to or I put them on Craigslist, whatever, or offer up or Facebook Marketplace. But these are the buckets that we kind of put up there. So let's walk you over to the dealership. Oh yeah, I forgot. I mean, not the shop, not the dealership. The dealership's over that way. So you guys can see. It's actually a pretty big lot. We can hold up to uh, 120 cars if we stack everything up correctly. Kind of get an aerial view there. Um, I'm gonna get my drone and see if I can fly it up that way so you guys can see it. Um, right here is the staging area for repairs. So like these cars right here, we just got them dropped off. So we're gonna go through each one, see if it's ready for either service or sales and kind of walk through it. So, but like this one right here, this is a good story. Dodge darts, and you guys are mechanics, these ones, the tummy belts always break in them and the head gaskets usually blow. So if you can get one of these, like this one's only got 60,000 miles. We paid 1,500 bucks for it and it's a 2015. You know what's funny? We paid actually $1,500 for this one, Nissan Sentra, and it's like a 2000 and I think five. But it runs and drives good, it's just ugly. It's been sitting out of somebody's house forever. Um, that's one of our other tow trucks. We took the bed off of that one. <coughs> Excuse me. We took the bed off of that one, put it on the new truck. Go back here, and this is our shop. All open up from the inside. Hopefully the lights are on. If not, I'll turn them on for you guys, but you can see it's a uh, about a 10, 10 bay shop. It's really big. This used to be a franchise store. So we share basically everything over uh, this way is ours. And then right there from the middle, there is another company that does handicap accessible vehicles and that's where uh, they're at. So we're gonna go ahead and walk over here just to kind of show you how big this thing is. So we lucked out, like I said, in one of my first videos, we talked about picking your location. So this way you know where you need to go at. This one, it's, my office is not as nice, but the frontage was killer. This is our service drive. So we got our little service base here against the wall. All right, I'm gonna open up the door here. All right, it's probably gonna get dark. So right now we're getting ready to redo this one. Kind of excuse the mess. Okay, here's our shop. Walk into here. So we got everything lit up pretty much. We have our lifts. We have a bunch of two posts, four posts, compressor, industrial parts washer. This one's pretty cool. It's got a, a tank actually inside of it so you can throw the parts inside. Shake and bake. This desk, which needs to be thrown away, it's a fire hazard. Just remember guys, nothing wood can be in your shop. Spring compressor. We got one of the cool, coolest oil uh, setups. This is our oil transmission and coolant tanks. Instead of having a bunch of old ghetto ass drums, you got this very clean setup, looks like a bar tab. 
and they stack these up. And these are all 300 gallons, or excuse me, not 300 gallons, 250 gallons. So you could stack all these up. It's about 10 feet tall, but it takes up a fraction of the footprint. Very cool. Just more racks, random stuff like that. So this is the service base. And then over here, you're gonna see some of our projects. I haven't got it yet, but basically this flat open space is for our fabrication bay. Um, we're waiting for our new welding tables to come in. But we have a uh, MIG welder. My TIG welder is at my house. So I'm gonna bring that one over. You gotta have the barbecue grill. Actually, we just bought this one. Um, here's a BMW motor. We're actually gonna be putting in a Miata. That one's gonna be pretty hilarious. Um, oil reservoir tanks. Uh, this is one of our guys' is Integra build. I don't know what he's gonna do with it, but I think he bought it for $200, so we'll see. But if you kind of look this way, you can see how big the shop is. So it's a little over, uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is, this is 6,000 square feet or maybe 7,000 square feet, but it's pretty large. It's, it's more rectangular, longer. So when the cars pull up, you got a pretty good distance. So a full size SUV can fit onto this ramp and not touch the front and back at the same time. And I still got about seven feet from the wall to the beginning of that. And then from the end of that to the wall, that's probably another two to three feet. So if you kind of look around, like I said, it's, you know, start off with something small and build yourself up. This is actually one of my smaller shops. Um, before I had the dealership, my shop was 15,000 square feet. It was really cool. We had a paint booth, uh, upholstery guys, everybody in there. I just wanted to make this video just to kind of help you guys out and show you um, what my dealership looks like. Um, our second location is going up um, next month. We closed our other one. Um, this other one's good. It's a little bit bigger than this one, but it's going to be a very cool setup. Um, we did this one with very minimal money down, um, and we're trying to do very low startup costs. So a lot of these cars you see here, like I said, some are flooring, some you can get on consignment. So this way you don't have to tax yourself out with flooring plans because that's the fastest way to drain your money. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comment section below. If you look, I answer every single one. I want to make sure that I try to spread whatever knowledge I got to help you guys out. Um, and our website's almost done. It took a little bit longer, but we're actually going to be putting out a course on how to start your dealership, what to do, the banks to get set up with, flooring. A lot more detailed information, easier broken down than our first video. But our first video, go ahead and watch it if you haven't seen that. It's really good detailed information because I know a lot of the... Uh, wannabe dealers made these videos. They never really show their dealership. They never really talk about their dealership. And they don't talk about the individual steps and how credit plays into you getting your dealer's license. So go ahead and watch that video. Um, any other questions, go ahead and hit us up. We'll see you then.